Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, we're in unit 5, lesson 10, and we're looking at project 1. This problem tells us to have students in groups of 4 look through this code, it says that each student should focus on a specific section, and really what we want to do is just break down how this program runs. On the left hand side we have a mile tracker form. Let's go ahead and run the app just to see how it works. Let's see here, we'll do 14. And we can see that as I put those numbers in, we get a couple of things. We get an average, we get the fastest time, we get the slowest time, and we get the total amount of miles that are run. And we have things like this box right here, which clears out as numbers are put into the app. This part tells us to discuss the code just to see how it works. And then it tells us to create a function that adds together the total time of every element in the list, it tells us to output that to the app, and it tells us to call this function within the update screen function that's built in here. Let's go ahead and collapse the instructions for a little bit just so that we can see the code. All right, at the top we have a few variables that were created. We have a list here with mile times. And then it looks like we're gonna update the variables here with average, fastest, slowest, total miles, and a variable called new time. All right, the first thing we have here is our on event click. We can see that the new time pulls the information from the app and then we can see that this line of code right here appends the miles times with the new time that was just brought in from the app and then adds one to the total miles and then it updates the screen. All right, let's look at the next one. The update screen runs the average, fast, slow, and then numbered list display functions. And then we can see that it also sets some text. All right, let's look at the next function. This function right here creates a local variable and then it runs a for loop. And then within this for loop, we have i is set to zero. And then we compare the variable i with the length of the miles times list. And then it adds one to it once it's run. For this function, we can see that the total is updated with the current total and then adds the new mile time. So if there's nothing there, it now adds it. And if there are previous numbers there, it just adds it to what's already existing. And then what it does is it updates the average variable with the total that we just calculated, and then it divides it by the number within the length. And then it calculates the average and then spits it out to the variable average. Then we have the slow function. Again, we have a local variable. We do a for loop, which has i set at zero, and then compares the variable i to the length of the list, and then updates it by one. If the mile time at index, whichever the variable is at, is greater than temp, it's going to update the temp variable with that new mile time that was added. This works because we set our variable here at zero. And then it goes ahead and it updates the slowest variable. For the fast function, we see here that we have a local variable. It immediately sets that variable to the first index mile input, and then uses that to compare the numbers that are input after that. So we have our var i equals zero. We then compare i to the miles time length so that it stops when it gets to the last number. And then we add one to that. And what it does here in this if is it looks at the mile times at index zero and it looks to see is that number less than temp? Now this can get confusing because we have to remember that fast is gonna be small when it comes to time. The smaller the number, the faster it is. And so that's why we're looking for less than here. If the mile times is less than the current temp, then it goes ahead and updates that temp at that current index, and then it spits that out at the bottom to the variable fastest. And then within this function, numbered list display, we have our local variable set as an empty string. We're running through this, we have the variable i set at zero. It's then comparing that variable to the length of the list to see if it's less than and then it adds one. The tricky part in this section is that as it's spitting out the text that's gonna go on the screen, right here we have i plus one. That's because remember, indexes start at zero. If we use just i, on the screen it would say mile zero, and we don't want that. Humans start counting at one, so we do i plus one so that we use that first indexed entry as mile one. And then when it goes to the next one, it'll add one, so it'll be mile two. 
If we look back at our instructions, we're told that we need to update this code. It says that we need to create a function that adds together the total time of every element in the list. So we're going to go to the functions toolbox section. We're going to go ahead and create a function at the bottom of this. This function we'll call total. We're going to copy the pattern that they did. We're going to go ahead and create a variable. We'll call this sum and we'll set that to zero. We're then going to run a for loop. So let's go to the control. And we'll drag that into the function. Variable i equals zero is perfect. We want to again copy what we saw above, which is going to be miles times dot length. So if that's the case, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go back to variables. We're going to assign to our variable sum is equal to within this, we're going to use the addition. We're going to do sum. And then here we want mile times, do an open bracket, I. That will add the mile times together. Then we need to update the console log. So we'll go to variables. We'll pull in console log below our for loop. We're going to use the math addition. And we'll use our variable sum. The last thing that it tells us that we need to do is we need to call this function within the update screen. So within this, we'll go back to the functions toolbox. We'll drag over my function and we call this total. Let's run the app to see if it works. 14. We can see that I had a misspelling on line 70. We can see that I added an S to mile. Let's go to rerun the code. And each time I add a time, we can see in the console log that it's adding it together. I think the hardest part of this part of the lesson is just looking through the code and making sure that you understand what's going on within the app. And it might take you a few minutes to really just kind of dive through and look through it before you fully understand it. But once you've gone through it and you feel comfortable, this lesson really isn't all that difficult. When you're done, click finish.